All right, so in this video, we're kind of following up with the podcast that we did on psychrometrics. And what I want to cover in this video is just a couple of concepts for a controls person. I'm not going to really get into a bunch of math and things like that. What I really want to dive into here is more just kind of what all this means. If you're looking at this chart for the first time and how to read it, the things that are going to be pretty important to you and just how this all comes together. I've used this a lot of times in my career and it's been fairly helpful. So let's dive in. The first thing when you're looking at a psychrometric chart is to make sure that you have the right psychrometric chart. So on some charts, it will say for your actual um, elevation, this is the chart. This chart doesn't show that, uh, but you want to make sure that you have, especially like if you're in an area with different elevations, which isn't going to be a lot of you, but some of you. All right. The next thing we need to know is kind of what are our axes? Where are our lines? Where, what does the interactions between our lines mean? The primary ones we want to focus on here are dry bulb, relative humidity, okay, wet bulb, and saturation, also known as dew point, and then our amount of moisture per pounds of dry air, right? The grains of moisture, so our humidity ratio. So if we were sitting at, you know, 75, 50, let's just do that, right? 75, 50, there's so many lines. I'm like, where do I draw this thing? Okay, 75, 50%. So if we're here, then what's going on is that we can see kind of what our humidity ratio is. We can see how much moisture we have. We can see kind of what is our wet bulb temperature. And what will t traditionally happen in air conditioning and heating, which we're primarily focused on, is really, you know, your, your sensible heating, your sensible cooling, and your latent cooling. Uh, you also have humidification and dehumidification, but we're going to focus on primary things. So if you're a controls tech and you get sent out to a site and maybe it's, you know, a little too humid, it's kind of up here, then what will often happen is we're going to use cooling and we're going to use cooling to drive to dew point. So we're going to drive using our cooling and then we're going to sub cool. So we're going to hit dew point at 65 degrees. That means at this point we can no longer hold any moisture in the air. Like the air is fully saturated. It's full of moisture. So what's going to happen? You see our, our grains of moisture right here, kind of what we're at now, what's going to happen as we continue to cool the air, and we drive it down right to maybe like 55 degrees. Now our humidity ratio has dropped, right? So we've enacted uh, cooling to the point where we are hitting dew point and we're driving it down, 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 down. And now we're at 55 degrees. And this is why 55 degrees is a set point for most air handling units, by the way, is because we're coming in at 75 degrees and, you know, we've got that 10 degree delta, right? See, 65, 55. I hope you all are starting to see this because oftentimes you're like, why do I have a 10 or 12 degree delta on my coil, right? Entering and leaving. Well, it's because, right, when we go and let's say we're at 75, 70, so 75 degrees, 70% relative humidity, and we go in, we're at 65 when we hit saturation. And granted, you're like, well, I actually have a 20 degree, right, because this is 75. And right here, this is actually 55. But at dew point, we're 10. Right. So right here we're going, we're cooling, 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 cooling. And then we hit dew point at 65 and we drive down to 55 and we see 55 is a nice sweet spot for saturation. You can even go a little bit lower, like to 53. And if we wanted to now we can actually reheat the air. So let's just reheat it from 55 and see what happens. So let's say our temperature to control, we're just gonna choose an easy one because there's a straight line right here is 70. So if we go 55 to 70 and we hit right here, 
all right? 55 to 70. And actually, let me delete this guy right here. So there we go. If we go 55 to 70, and we were here, right? Our amount of moisture is significantly lower, okay? You seeing that? So this is really important. Our, our amount of moisture is now significantly lower, so our humidity ratio. So if we continued to the 75 degree mark and we look at it, we are significantly less amount of moisture in the air. So that is one of the big things on psychrometrics. I'll do another video tomorrow because I want to keep this at about five minutes where we'll talk about humidification and dehumidification. But this is like the most basic principle of psychrometrics, of humidity, of temperature control within building automation is this concept of cooling the airstream, wringing out the moisture, and then heating it back up to go and be at a lower relative humidity with less moisture in there. So hopefully this helps you. Uh, feel free to ask any questions you have in the comments. Thanks a ton. Take care.